So, I'm looking to make a couple of sundials. There's a couple of reasons I want to do this. Partly because um, I've always been interested in uh, technology um, and the way in which past technology and ancient technology can also sort of influence uh, current technology. Equally, I've been really fascinated by uh, monumental structures which are used like calendars. So Stonehenge in particular is a famous one not far from here in the southwest. But I've also been really fascinated by the Nebra Sky Disc, which is um, a ancient star map, essentially, that was found in Germany. And it dates back to probably around 300 BC. So these objects which act as both um, objects which are beautiful, but also functional, always really interest me. So making a sundial feels like a really nice chance to play with that a bit further. But there are so many different ways of making a sundial. You can have a sort of equatorial ones, you can have ones on rods, you can have ones on walls. So any structure that can record uh, a shadow passing across another surface throughout the day can essentially act as a sundial. But to make my life easy, I'm going to make um, two quite simple forms. Um, the first being a vertical sundial. Um, so it sits on a vertical plane with the gnomon, or the sort of sticky out bit, um, sort of pointing down towards the ground. And then the second one will be a horizontal sundial with the gnomon pointing up. Um, and this is sort of what most people would have seen. It's the kind of thing that you can buy in a garden centre. And so I want to create these objects um, so that they feel like they could be either something that's futuristic or, 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 or ancient. Um, so for the vertical sundial, I'm thinking that something that's a bit like a, a shield shape almost. Um, and then we'll have our, our, our lines and our gnome on. Um, and I want it to be held up by two supports, which again, I don't know quite what I'll make them out of. Um, they might be oak, so that it has sort of this sense of something that's got kind of a, a um, feeling of being ancient. Um, and so that'll be held up vertically. Uh, and then the horizontal sundial, I want to sit in a similar world. Um, so what I'll have is no mon pointing up like that. And it'll probably be sat on some kind of um, tower or rod or plinth. But again, they might be wood or they might be cast concrete, um, I've used both before, so I'll see how I feel um, later down the line. But, first step in this process, um, if I want to get an accurately working sundial, is to get the measurements um, that are specific to my area. And this is key because a sundial works to a specific latitude. So, luckily online there are many, many uh, calculators which will give you the correct angles that the lines um, need to sit on your dial. So here we are at 51 degrees. Uh, so if I calculate that, I'm then presented with a nice um, set of angles which I can then translate into AutoCAD. So AutoCAD is the tool that I use uh, that will take my drawings and turn them into something that can be cut with a laser. So my initial process has been to start laying out the angles and then embellish essentially. So what's quite nice is everything about this starts from the purely functional needs to have a set of lines um, at certain angles. Um, so the gnomon needs to be at 51 degrees and then everything else is set as to the calculation that I was given online. Um, and from there, I can start adding embellishment. So it also requires uh, nine numbers, times of day. So I thought rather than going numerically on the vertical one, um, I'll do a sun and a moon, sort of morning and evening, and then use sort of small little uh, suns, so six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and little moons, one, two, three, four, five, six, to um, denote the evening. And then I start using this technique, which I use a lot in my drawings, is taking these functional lines and um, offsetting them. So if I start um, pulling these apart, um, you create interesting interactions between the shapes. And it's those sort of unknown interactions that I find quite interesting because then the final form um, is less designed and it comes from sort of a more playful place. And so from there, we then end up with something that has a bit more of a uh, elaborate feel but I think it still holds on to that sense of it being something that has a purpose, ultimately. Uh, then we look at the um, 
uh, horizontal sundial. So this, I want to be in the same world, but I thought rather than using pictorial images uh, to, to mark the times of the day, I'd go classic and go back to Roman numerals. And what's nice about Roman numerals is they um, in themselves are really quite sort of basic graphic forms. So they're straight lines, one, a V is five, an X is 10. So from there, I can lay out the various lines uh, that are appropriate to the um, sundial. You'll see here, they're, they're quite specifically um, set at angles here and then start embellishing and doing the offset process again. And ultimately you get to a point where um, this will be the final form that's cut. And because this is on a vertical plane, I wanted to create something that almost uh, could be expanded a bit more. So to pull it into the, um, uh, in the vertical rather than being just on the horizontal. So um, I started cutting up this shape and what you're left with is some quite interesting other forms, which I'm gonna get cut as well, which I think can sort of start to stack and become sort of additions to the, um, the sort of main flat surface of the horizontal dial. And what I like about this process as well is these little shapes become sort of objects in themselves. And so I've decided to take some of these small ones um, and blow them up a bit, um, add another offset. And again, these can then become uh, other parts that I'll get cut, which I think can become a different sculptural object in itself. So now that I've got all that sorted, the next step is to send it off and get it cut. And that's always very exciting because then you uh, get back what's all been digital to this point, it becomes physical. And so these stainless steel um, slices will come back and we can start to play in the studio and see what works and what doesn't. Um, but in the meantime, I can start playing with some other material. So maybe looking at uh, these potential oak supports or maybe casting a bit of concrete. So um, the blessing of doing everything in AutoCAD as well is I already know what the measurements are going to be. So there'll be no surprises um, if I lay uh, sort of anything out, depending on these drawings, when the actual objects come in laser cut, they should line up perfectly. So next step is to start to get some other materials together.